Hello and welcome PML fans. I'm your host Joseph Moore here bringing you PML draft recap week five. This week we had one team that could not battle due to Stewart, uh, coach of the New Zealand Kings. Congratulations to him is a father now. Uh, his uh, significant other had her baby uh, during the last week and unfortunately he couldn't get the battle done but I mean tis his life congratulations to him so him and Morgan will be making up that battle at a later date but let's go ahead and start with the game of the week all right so the game of the week was the battle of the defeated both teams have not won a game yet until this week uh, we had the Knoxville Kecleons with Licky Licky, Drapion, Zerkatry, Garchomp, Ice U, and Gastrodon versus the Philadelphia Polyraths with Aerodactyl, Chandelure, Melt Tank, Magneton, Tentacruel, and Vileplume. Um, both teams were 0 and 4 before going into this, but the Kecleons were able to come out on top. Thanks to Garchomp getting three kills, Zerktree getting two, and Drapion getting one. Polyraths tried to fight back, getting kills with Milk Tank, Tentacruel, and Magneton, but Kecleon's won 3-0. And that was your game of the week. Next up, we have the Saratoga Sableyes, who used Arcanine, Kartana, Glossiflor, Obstagoon, Rune Regis, and Galarian Slowking. Versus the Texas Golurks who use Swoobat, Skunk Tank, Dragapult, Centiscorch, Bronzong, and Swampert. Sableyes were able to take the 3 0 win versus the Golurks, with Slowking being his sweeper once again. Earlier this season, Slowking got four kills in a match but did not edge out getting the MVP of the week that week. And um, I think his chances were a lot better this week. Slowking led the way with four kills, while Optigan and Ruigus got those other two kills that helped him win the match. Um, uh, but uh, Slowking was definitely the sweeper in this one. Uh, Zong, Swampert, and Skunk Tank for the Golurks got kills, but Swampert went down to rocks in the end, and the rest were slim pickings for Slowking. So that was a 3 0 win for the Sableye. Next up, we got the New Orleans Apes who used Araquanid, Hydreigon, Conkelder, Rotom Mo, Nidoqueen, and Starmie versus the Day Day Knights who used Charizard, Espeon, Torkoal, Rotom Fan, Escadrill, I mean not Escadrill, sorry, Escavalier, and Chansey. Dusty was able to flex that bulk. Lost Mons early to Araquanid getting two kills and Conk getting one kill. But at the end, that's all Melvin could muster. Charizard had two kills, Espeon had one, but the front runner for this team was Chansey, who got three kills, was able to stall out uh, that Melvin team and get the kills it needed to end the game. So that was a, I believe, 3 0 for Dusty. Next up, we have uh, Coach Haseen of the Holy Crusaders who used Pukamuku, Turtonator, Halucha, Axorus, Naganadel, and Galarian Weezing. Um, a lot of the same mons he's been using all week, but uh, it's been working for him. I mean, all season, but it's been working for him. Uh, then we have the Crimson Slayer Fairies who use Aurork, Az Azuro. Serena, Silvali, Scizor, and Rhyperior. No, wait. I messed up. I must have not fixed that because I think Salamence came instead of Zoroark. Um, so this team might not be correct, but you know, we do what we can. Um, Haseen was able to start a win streak this week, getting his second win in a row uh, versus Cece, beating her 2 0 this week. Salamence was able to get two kills and Silvali got one for CC, but that was not enough to stop Turtonator leading the way with three kills. 
Weezing likely giving himself up for mementos to set up that Terminator uh, to start its rampage. But Haxorus, Halucha, and Pukamuku all were able to get kills while I believe Pukamuku got the final kill with Toxic on the Mints to end the game. So congratulations Haseen on that 2-0 win. Next up, we have the big rivalry game. We had the Florida for Alligators. He used Colossal, Durant, Malamar, Ditto, Mr. Rhyme, and Milotic versus the Blades, who used Kofagrigus, Nine Tails of Lolan, Komo'o, Jellicent, Sigilith, and Excadrill. And the big rivalry battle of the week goes to the Blades. Though this fell to timer, the Blades were able to come out on top. Only Ninetales went down on Matt's side, with Jellison, Excadrill, and Kofagrigus getting kills. While on Quake's side, only Malamar was able to get a kill while everyone else came up short. So congratulations to Matt on that timer win. Next we have the New England Chartriots, who used Skarmory. Nido King, Frostlass, Lycanroc Midday, Cinderace, and Slowbro Cantonian versus the Dragonites, who use Dragonite, Phalanx, Rhyperior, Rotom Freeze, Driftloom, and not Sceptile. He did not use Sceptile, so it was actually Nihilego, so I messed up on that one as well. And this matchup didn't go to the fan favorite. The Chartriots are the ones who came out on top. While the match came down to the last move, Needle King with no EVs and Ice Beam still beats a broken multi-scale Dragonite. So this came down to the undefeated Dragonites versus the 2-2 two two Chartriots, and the Chartriots were able to come out on top. Slowbro led the way in kills for the Chartriots, getting two kills, while Cinderace, Lycanroc, Midday, and Frostlass, and Needle King all got a kill. Of course, Needle King getting the final kill. On the other side, Dragonite led the kills with two for Dragonite's side. While Rhydon, Driplum, and Nihilego got kills as well. Driplum put early pressure, getting weakness policy boosted, going D-Max, taking a sucker punch from Cinderace. And luckily, the Chartreuse had a Frostlass, who was focus sashed. Because if not, that Driftlim would have went haywire. Um, the Frostlass was able to take down the Driftlim and also get the Hell up. While Dragonite got the Aqua Jet kill, Hell was able to take down the multi-scale for the Dragonite. Next, we have the Townsville Crocodiles, who brought NDD Mel, Hippowdon, Feramosa, Rabombi, Dracovish, and Poltegeist versus the Country Chinchinos who brought Claydol, Udra, Felix, Incineroar, Quagsire, and Slow King Jotoian. This was a late game. It, it came in way after Sunday. I think it was like Tuesday. They finally got their battle done. But with that being said, the Crocodiles came out with a 2-0 win versus the Chinchinos. Chinchinos gave a good fighting chance getting kills with Gudra, getting 3 kills, Quagsire getting 1 kill with Toxic, but that was not enough. Poltegeist was able to get actually 2 shell smashes up and led the team with 4 kills, eventually going down and Ndidi was able to close out the match with 2 kills. And that brings us to the most valuable Pokemon, which goes to Slowking, a much deserved reward for this Pokemon. It got four kills. Uh, Poltergeist also got four kills, but Slowking was able to survive its match with the four kills while Poltergeist fell. So, given the tiebreaker to Slowking here, uh, of Coach Josh of the Saratoga Sableyes. Week 5 MVP goes to Slowking. All hell, the front-running Slowmon, who got four kills in a match. Unlikely Mon to be the kill leader, but just goes to show, if you put a Mon in the hands of someone who can use it, 
it's gonna do damage and with that it brings us to pml singles draft ranking and as you can see uh since morgan and stewart did not battle their records uh still reflect uh previous week so they are down ranked because of that i'm sure if uh they battled it out uh spots may be different or it could be the same morgan could have came out on top it just depends on what ends up happening there but as it stands now dusty is the front runner at four and one with 20 plus differential the new zealand kings are second with three and one with plus 21 differential uh the texas goalers are three and two with plus 17 crooked dials are three and two with plus 11 uh saratoga stabilize are fifth with three and two at plus seven uh the new orleans apes are in sixth with three and two at plus five number seven is toronto tyranitars at 0 and three with negative 11 and number eight is the country chinchinos at 0 and four with negative 17 it should be negative five sorry but that is where they stand at the moment. Uh, as you can see, it's still pretty open. Everyone's at about three wins, two losses, and it all comes down to differential at that point. So try to avoid those timer wins and try to get those uh, regular wins so you get those plus three added to your differential, guys. And best of luck. We still got a few more weeks before playoff is decided. And on the Galar side... We have the Dragon Knights still leading the way even after the unfortunate loss for them at 4-1 at plus 26. Second, the Blades at 4-1 with plus 13. And they are on a roll this season. Number three, we have the Crimson Slayer Fairies work their way back up to third place with 3-2 with plus 15 differential. A lot of boost from that uh, week four win with the plus six automatically from that Salamence. Fourth place is the New England Tartriots at three and two with plus fourteen. They much they got that much needed win this week, and let's see if they can stay in the race. Number five, it's the Holy Crusaders at three and two with plus eight. They struggled at the beginning, but they seem to found their groove. The Florida for Alligators at two and three with plus two differential. They're down, but they are not out. Number seven is one and four with negative eleven. They got their first win, but it does not look like they're in playoff contention at this time. And then lastly, but not leastly, we got the Philadelphia Polyrafts at 0-5 with negative 14. Um, even though these guys may, in the lower portions may not have a chance to make playoffs, they still have a chance to knock people out of playoffs. So don't give up just yet, guys. Keep fighting strong, and we'll see you guys next week.